Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can linearize data. And this is what I mean by that. Let's consider an example. Uh, imagine we have a simple pendulum, so just a mass attached to a string that has a certain length. And I release it from rest and I count 10 oscillations and I measure how much time it takes to do those 10 oscillations. Now there's something I can vary. I can make the pendulum different lengths when I do that and repeat the experiment. So here's uh, some example of some experimental data for that. And I open my physics book and I have some underlying theory, right? And the theory tells me that the period, the time for one oscillation should vary like this. Um, so then I calculate the period based on my data and I plot it as a function of the length and lo and behold, um, the graph is not a straight line. So what can I do in order to represent it with a straight line and use that data in order to calculate what little g is? So we're gonna consider actually two other examples after once we get the hang of things. So three different examples that'll show you how to linearize experimental data to produce a straight line graph and use that straight line to extract uh, some information that we wanna find. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. All right, here's our first problem. We have a student measures the time for 10 oscillations uh, for several uh, simple pendulums with different lengths. The data is shown here. So we have the length and the time for these 10 oscillations. We have three questions related to this. Is the graph of the period versus the length linear? Okay, uh, number two, what can I do to make it linear? So I guess the first one is it's not linear, but we're gonna have a look at the data in just a minute. And determine the value of little g from the linearized data. Okay, so the first thing is we wanna plot the period versus the length. So what you have to do here is take this number, this is the time for 10 oscillations. We want the time for one oscillation. So all we have to do for that is simply divide by 10. So that's what I do over here, and I'm just keeping two significant figures over here. All right, so now we have the period and we have length. So I can make this graph of period versus the length. Uh, the underlying theory is given here by this equation, okay, that the period of this pendulum is equal to two pi square root of the length of that pendulum divided by little g. And little g is just the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so let's first uh, do the graph. If I do the graph over here, this is what it looks like. Right, I plot period on the y-axis versus the length of that pendulum simply using this data here Okay, in uh, the table. Uh, the points here represent the actual data points here. Okay, So there should be a point at length 2 and at a period 2.8. Uh, this is this point right here. Okay. Anyway, we have all the data here plotted. And if you have a look at it, I just drew a, an orange line through most of those data points here just to represent the trend. And one thing you could see is that it does not look like a straight line. Okay, and that's because, well, the theory actually doesn't predict it to be a straight line because of this square root factor here. So now let's look at what we can do to this data in order to linearize the data in order to make it linear. So we have to plot different things on the y and the x-axis. We can't just plot period and length because that is definitely not linear. So let's see at the transformation we have to make to this equation and what data do we have to plot to make this look like a straight line. All right, so question two says, what can I do or what do I have to basically plot in order to make it look like a straight line? So we have to start with our underlying theory over here. Now for something to look like a straight line graph, remember what a straight line equation looks like. It's simply a y equals to mx plus b type of equation, right? This here is a linear graph. Now, since I have a square root term over here, this is definitely not linear, right? For something to be linear, the exponent has to be one. Okay, and a lot of times you don't even end up writing that exponent, so I'll just remove it for now. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna eliminate this square root term. So one thing I could do is I could square both sides. If I square both sides, this becomes four pi squared. And now this here is going to disappear because I'm squaring a square root term. So I'm left with simply L divided by little g. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to group together all the constant terms in the front. Because remember in my experiment, I am varying L and I am measuring period. So let's group all the terms together. So we have t squared on the left-hand side. I'm gonna open this up. 
And you're going to see this is 4 pi squared. This is a constant term. It's just a number. And divided by little g. Little g is really what I want to determine. And at the end, we still have to multiply by the length l. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my linear equation right under here. y equals to mx plus b. Okay. Now, if I compare the two, let's have a look at this, right? If you compare both of those equations, um, first of all, they're different, right? But if I set y equals to period squared, if I set l equal to my x value, you can see right away, again, there is nothing here for the intercept term, the b term, right? It's basically 0 over here, so let's just set b equals to 0. Forget about that term. But this here is an equation for a straight line. So in order for my data to look like a straight line, right, what I should be plotting right here, again, if it's a y versus x with a slope equal to the m value, really what I want to do is I want to plot period squared over here. And on the x-axis, I want to plot the length of that pendulum. If I make a plot of period squared versus the length, that here should look like a straight line graph, okay? And that should look like a straight line graph. And the slope of this line is going to be the m value, right? The slope of that graph is going to be equal to 4 pi squared divided by little g. That is the slope of this straight line graph of period squared versus length. All right, let's go have a look at it and see uh, using this data here in the table to see what this looks like. All right, so the first thing I have to do is I need to calculate, based on all that data in the table, the period squared, right? And that is going to be in units of seconds squared. So you simply take the uh, values in the column with the period and square those values. Okay, and we get the final column over here. Now, all I want to do, again, I'm setting this equal to my y value. I'm plotting those values on the y-axis, and I'm plotting the length here on the x-axis. And here is the data now from the table. Have a look at those data points now. Those data points, if I just kind of eyeball them, they look pretty linear to me, right? This looks very linear, right? It looks like I can fit that data to a straight line compared to the previous one where I plotted period versus length that look uh, non-linear. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use the plotting software in order to determine the slope of that line. All right, so we do that. We determine what the slope of that line is. And here's the value that my plotting software, in this case, I just use Excel, gave me. Now, not only do they give me a slope, notice they also give me an intercept. And my theory told me there should not be an intercept, but this is real world data here. So there could be a small intercept, right? We notice that it is small. So that's a good sign also. Now, my slope value, which I'm just going to call M over here, m is equal to the slope. In this case, it's 4.1273. And if we remember some of our analysis, the slope was equal to 4 pi squared divided by little g. I can now do a little bit of algebra in order to determine what the value of little g is based on this experiment. So let's go ahead and do that. All you have to do is bring m down at the bottom and bring little g on the other side. So we get little g is 4 pi squared divided by m. All right, so you simply do 4 pi squared, put that in the calculator, and my value of the slope is 4.1273. Now, based on this uh, the calculation, you get a little g value that's approximately equal to 9.57 meters per second squared. Okay, that's not bad, right? The value close to the Earth, we typically use like 9.8 meters per second squared, but based on this experiment, uh, this is the value that we would find. Right? And we did that by linearizing the data of the experiment. All right, let's have a look at a different example now. All right, my second example, we have a student measures the displacement of a cart at different times as, as it's being pulled down a track by a force. All right, the quantities of the displacement are related to the time by just our simple kinematics equation here in equation one. Uh, A is the acceleration of that cart. All right, and I've given you some data here in the table. That gives you the distance of the cart um, and also the time it takes to cover that distance. 
All right, so if I make a plot now of uh, D, let's go ahead here, uh, D, and plot it as a function of time here, just plot the data directly, uh, this is what it looks like right here. I have uh, five data points based on the values in the table. And you can see that these points, they certainly do not look like a straight line. And that's because of our equation one right here, right? Our underlying theory tells us that we really don't expect a straight line of if I plot D versus T because of this exponent here, right? Since this exponent is two, um, we really don't expect a straight line. So what can I now do if I wanted to linearize this data? What should I plot? in order to make this data look like a straight line and maybe use it in order to find what is the acceleration of this cart. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we start with our underlying equation. And remember for a straight line or something linear, it should look like this, mx plus b. All right, notice there is no additional term here. There's no intercept term, right? When time is zero, the distance is zero. So we could just forget about this intercept term. Okay, so what should I do, right? How do I change the data here in order to make a plot that would look like a straight line? Uh, again, what you wanna do is basically compare these two. So I'm gonna start with just writing it out. I'm gonna group together a couple terms here. I'm gonna group together the one half and the A, and then I'm gonna just call T squared, leave that out by itself. Okay, now right underneath it, I write down my equation for the straight line. And this should become clear to you, right? So if on the y-axis I plot uh, the displacement d, if on the x-axis I group everything together here, right? I group this whole term, which is providing this uh, quadratic term, and I call it x. So that means I have to generate a new column from my data, and that new column should be time squared. Right, and now if I make a plot, so let's go ahead and just kind of sketch something quickly here. If I end up plotting uh, the distance versus time squared, my data now should look like a straight line. So let's go ahead and do that. So down here in the table here, I've actually calculated what the value of time squared is, and I keep the distance the exact same. So now let me go ahead and add that data to a plot and we can compare the two. All right, this is what it looks like. So my original plot is up in the top figure and you can see that it's definitely not a straight line. It looks like a parabola to me. Now, if I plot displacement versus time squared, so we have displacement over here and time squared down here on the X axis, you can see that that transformation actually makes the data look like a straight line to me. Well, now my underlying equation, remember, was one half. Um, a t squared. Now based on this data, what I could do now is fit a straight line to this data and guess what? The slope is the term in the front, right? We've grouped together everything here for time squared equal to x. The term in the front represents the slope of that line of d versus t squared. So if we go ahead and do that, uh, my slope value should be simply equal to one half times uh, the acceleration, and the acceleration is what I'm trying to solve for right now. So this is pretty straightforward. The acceleration is simply two times uh, the slope of that graph. So let's go ahead and do that. So I use the plotting software now uh, in order to look at the linearized data. So that's displacement versus time squared. I fit that value to a straight line, and this is what the software gave me for my straight line, my best fit. Again, we noticed that the intercept uh, is a very small value. And as predicted, right, if you're starting at zero, at time zero, uh, there should be zero displacement. So again, now I could use this in order to calculate what the acceleration is, right? Our acceleration was simply two times m. So it's basically two times 2.0051. Let's just round that off. Our acceleration is approximately four meters per second squared based on this experimental data. Okay, so this is another example of linearization. Let's do one more case. All right, my final uh, experiment here, what I wanna do is again, it's a cart experiment. This time I'm measuring the velocity of the cart when after it travels a certain distance d. Again, we're gonna have constant acceleration. And if we have constant acceleration, one kinematic equation uh, should look familiar to you is this one here, that the velocity squared 
equals to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the distance that I travel. All right, uh, that is what our theory tells us. Um, here's our experimental data. If I simply make a plot of velocity versus distance traveled or my displacement, um, this is what I get. The data points are shown in blue and I've just kind of added a red kind of trend line over here just to demonstrate that um, this is not a straight line graph. It may not be quite as obvious as the previous cases I looked at, but definitely not a straight line. So the question is, well, how do I linearize this data and how can I use it to determine two values? What if I wanted to find what is the acceleration of the cart? Now, in addition, I could say, oh, what is the initial velocity of this cart? Because in this case here, I didn't start from rest, okay? I ha actually had an initial velocity which is equal to V0. So let's have a look at our equation, our theory, and see how we would linearize this and calculate those values. All right, so we first start with kind of our underlying theory, just like I did before. Again, uh, we have data for V and we have data for uh, the distance D. Um, so right under this, I'm gonna write my equation for the straight line, right? I have Y equals to MX. Uh, plus B. Now in this case, you can see now we're going to have an intercept term. We can't just set it to zero. There's another term in our underlying theory. All right, so what should I do? Well, basically if I call my Y value and I'm going to plot on the Y axis, if I make a new data, which is equal to V squared, okay? So I have to go through, take these values and calculate V squared, make a new column. All right, what about the next term? Well, my slope term Again, I have data for D, so I don't even have to change that one, okay? So my X value is simply going to be uh, the displacement of the cart. Now the M value in this case is going to be two times the acceleration if I group both of those terms. And what else? Well, the intercept term in this case here is simply equal to V naught squared. Okay, so if I quickly just make a sketch of V squared versus D at the end, my data should look like a straight line. I could set that, I can use my plotting software in order to find the equation for the straight line, which is going to look like my equation up here. In this case, the value of the slope is simply going to be twice the acceleration, and the value of the y-intercept is going to be equal to the initial velocity squared. All right, so let's go ahead and do that, okay? So we first start by creating a column equals to V squared and making this plot of V squared versus D to calculate acceleration and initial velocity. All right, so I start by generating this new column, which is velocity squared, which has different units. You just simply square each value of the velocity. And then I said we make a plot of velocity squared versus the displacement. You can see these green data points here, they fall on a straight line. I then use the plotting software in order to fit a straight line to that data, and this is the value I get. Now again, that straight line is the value of this blue dotted curve right down below. You can see it is a very straight line. Now based on my analysis, I said that the slope should be equal to twice the acceleration. Well, I can use this now to find what the acceleration is. It's simply the slope divided by two. In this case, it's 6.031 divided by two. Uh, that gives me a value of approximately uh, 3.02 meters per second squared. Uh, what else? Now I can also find what the initial velocity is, right? The initial velocity squared was equal to the y-intercept. The y-intercept in this case is 15.8. So all you have to do, if you want to find that initial velocity, you simply take the square root of the intercept, which is the square root of 15.8. Uh, initial velocity, put that one in the calculator, gives me approximately 3.97 uh, meters per second. Okay, so that's how you can extract information based on linearizing the data and using this underlying theory uh, and using, in this case, the slope and uh, the y-intercept to get the values we are looking for. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully you uh, liked this video and it gave you some insight on how to linearize experimental data.